All of the joysticks in this video were provided by Lumi Maniac, the arcade gaming and LED lighting store. When you're building your own arcade stick or you're replacing old sticks, you're faced with a lot of options. Now, how do you select the stick that is right for you or for your application? In this video, I'm going to go over a number of different joysticks made by different manufacturers. I'll try and give an impression of how they feel and I'll talk about their defining properties. Hopefully you'll get the information you need to make the right choice. Roughly speaking, there are ball top and bat top arcade sticks. There are other sticks for specific purposes. They'll have different buttons or different shapes, but I'll just concentrate on the most common ones. While it's fairly common to be able to unscrew the top of your stick, to replace it with something else, be aware that not all sticks screw apart like that. Some are fixed, so if you have a preference for a ball or a bat, then make sure that that's what you get. Generally speaking, the parts of a stick are the shaft and possibly a shaft cover, its top, a dust cover, the base plate, the switches, usually four, the restrictor plate, and its gate, some connectors, possibly uh, LEDs, and there are usually some springs or E-clips and other materials. When choosing a stick, one of the things to pay attention to is the shaft length. A longer stick will have a larger throw distance, but if your application has a thick control panel, a short stick may not clear it enough. And maybe you need a very short throw distance for quick movements in uh, shooters or fighters. The dust cover simply keeps dust and dirt out of your stick. They do come in different colors, but basically it's just a piece of plastic. If you have a large drill hole to work with though, then make sure you get a dust cover that is large enough to cover the hole. The base plate determines where the screws go. That's important if your do-it-yourself stick has pre-drilled holes. Not all manufacturers follow the same standard and many just pick one. You can buy ready-made sticks and they'll have holes pre-drilled for sandwich sticks. Also make sure that you pick the correct screws and bolts you don't want anything sticking up from underneath your control panel. You can catch your hands on them and it's not nice. The top surface you want to be as clean as possible. Most joysticks come with micro switches, but some come with leaf switches. The leaf switches were the old method and at one point they came up with these micro switches. Leaf switches, they don't click. If you want to know more about micro switches, I've made a video about buttons and I spend some time on micro switches in that video. There's a link in the description. In some sticks you can swap out the switches for other ones once you've made up your mind about what you prefer. Most switches allow you to connect wires directly using flat connectors. However, a growing amount of sticks come with five pin connectors nowadays. So think about that when you're going to build your own stuff. Now, the restrictor plate with its gate deserves a chapter of its own. The restrictor plate sits at the bottom of your stick and physically restricts movement. It holds a gate that can have several shapes. It can be round, elliptical, square, or octagonal. And you can always set the orientation of the gate. The gate limits and guides your movements. Now this is crucial. While you can game without a restrictor plate, your diagonals will be longer than the other directions. So a restrictor plate can really be a great help. However, the wrong gate or the right gate in the wrong orientation can be a great annoyance. The old arcade games like Pac-Man and Dig Dug they are best played when you can feel where up, down, left and right are. That's what the square gate does when it's tilted. 
With a square gate in a level orientation, playing Pac-Man can become very hard. You won't be able to go down corridors very easily. If you use the same stick to play a game like Robotron, on the other hand, that relies on diagonals. Now you can play with diagonals if you have the square gate in a level position. But it's even better to use an octagonal gate in that case. For a game like Galaga, you could use an elliptical gate which only allows two ways left and right. So the type of game that you play with your stick determines which gate you need and how it needs to be oriented. Most arcade games that rely on up, down, left and right, they also do well with an octagonal gate. Now, Sanwa allows you to swap out the gate in their restrictor plate. You can remove the gate and put in a different shape one. Saimitsu, they have a different solution. They have different templates that you combine and screw on. And there's one stick that even has a switch that will allow you to select between two different orientations of a square gate. Now, let's look at some sticks. The first one is the Arcade Fighter UM8. This is a very impressive joystick which feels light and fast and not excessively clicky. You'd be hard pressed to distinguish this from a high level Sanwa stick. Because of its shaft length it's great for mounting under a thick control panel. It's got four micro switches and a large dust cover. You can unscrew the red ball top it comes shipped with. It's a great alternative for a top of the line stick. The zippy stick may be easily overlooked, but it's definitely worth consideration. It feels very smooth and not super clicky. It's perhaps a little bit heavier than the previous one, but it feels very solid. You can change out the switches if you like. And it has the Saimitsu way of switching the gate between 2, 4 and 8 way. But if you need to switch regularly, a Sanwa adapter compatible stick may be a better choice. Again, it's got a long stick, which is ideal for most arcade situations with a thick control panel. This is the Leaf Pro, and it does not have micro switches. There was a time when this was the standard. No clicks and a very smooth feel. The Leaf Pro allows a, a different feeling of precision rather than the on-off feeling of micro switches. Because the blades of the context can be tweaked, you have control over the trade-off between the throw of the stick, the dead zone, and the contact point. The stick has a very low profile and it's a very low-tech, versatile stick. I know what I'm using in my Commodore 64 joystick build. There simply is no way around the Sanwa sticks. They set the standard. It's used in many professional arcades and sticks. It's light, responsive, it can take a beating, making it the king of sticks. With its easy, no tools required way of switching between 4 and 8 way restrictor plates, there's almost no reason for looking elsewhere. You can even select a different spring if you feel that the stick is too light or too heavy for your liking. Many do-it-yourself kits follow the Sanwa standard for mounting sticks to the control panel. Don't forget that this stick comes with one of those 5 pin connectors. If you like a stick with a little bit more resistance though, or you enjoy a bit stronger click, then you would be wrong following the crowds and buying this stick just because it's the most popular choice. This is the Speed Stick version 2. It's a drop and replacement for the Sanwa sticks and the improved version of the previous Speed Stick. It feels light and solid. The clicks sound a little bit more springy compared to the Sanwa. It's available with heavier springs and can be fitted with the flexible Sanwa restrictor plate. You can replace the ball top with another color or a bat if you want. I would consider this stick a great alternative for the Sanwa. Saimitsu is the other big name in arcade parts. They are made for professional use and are of the highest quality, which also means that they use top quality micro switches. The Saimitsu has a short shaft and is best suited for thin control panels, but there are options like shaft extenders. 
The restrictor option on this stick is less elegant than Sanwa's solution, but not less effective. You have a number of templates that you unscrew and that can be refitted to suit your needs. It feels just as solid as the Sanwa stick and I wouldn't know one from the other just by the feel of moving it. This is the Battle Stick Advance. It is compatible in every way with the Sanwa sticks, so it has a 5-pin connector and can use the same restrictor plates. This stick feels a little bit more clunky and makes a louder clicky sound. If you're not into super silent, super small throw type sticks, then this might be for you. The ball top screws off as well. I like this stick. It's no nonsense, good quality and versatile. The classic American style joysticks are different from the Japanese ones. This is an American stick and it's huge. It's rather quiet, it's got a sizable throw and an attachment that lets you choose the dead zone. It feels nice to play with and it behaves like a gentle giant, I would say. It's nice and light, not very clicky, but it lacks the finesse of the Japanese sticks. Most notable is the absence of the restrictor plate. I rather like this one, but I'm not sure if it would fit everybody's playstyle. This is the Ultimark Mag Stick. We've seen Ultimark before. Just looking at this stick is enough to tell you that this is made to last. It is a beast. It's big and heavy and made to be used by hairy people with big muscles, mullets and tattoos. It actually has a very nice click and is the only stick where you can rotate the square gate with a switch on the side. That's a really nice idea if you want to switch between game styles that rely on diagonals or not. That switch also turns the micro switch activator on the stick to match your selection. This stick doesn't use a spring internally, but a magnet. It's got a very short throw and operates lighter than its brawn would suggest. This fun little stick is an RGB LED stick. It's called the Bubble Ball, and it basically just wants to be seen. It's got a see-through ball top and the ability to attach a LED. It's all disco. It feels very light and it's rather clicky. The restrictor option is of the Saimitsu style, so with the attachable templates. It has not one but two 5-pin connectors and I'm not so sure why. If looks and visibility are your main concerns, then this is a cool choice. So that's been my look at uh, arcade joysticks. I guess the... Uh the main message is that if you're willing to spend a little bit of money on a good stick, that uh, you really can't go wrong. You can't buy a bad stick. They're all good. Uh, the really cheap ones will get you a stick, but they won't feel as nice and they won't work as well. Um, I think I've given you an overview of some of the uh, important uh, aspects of choosing a stick. I hope it's been useful. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time.